All I felt was bug. <laughs> no. No to what? But he asked if they were happy if we were here. Welcome to County Line Area Paranormal Society. Paranormal Investigations. Blessings. Peace of Mind, Research, and Theory presents a collaborative investigation featuring special guests such as The Three Square Hollow Vista, also known as the Three Square Hollow Overlook, among other names offers one of the best views in the Cumberland Valley. From here, you can see beautiful sweeping views of Newburgh and rolling farmland from this perch located in the Tuscarora State Forest. As a local, I have many found memories of this lookout and have heard stories from others saying they have had uneasy feelings there and the feeling of someone watching them. Bailey and I have investigated there before where I had an intense personal experience where I couldn't breathe and felt a cold, tight sensation around my chest. We ended up leaving right after that. I wasn't able to find much history about this place, but I remember a sign posted there naming it Lucy's Peak. This sign has since been removed and I can't find anything out about the name. The Fairchild C-119 was a military transport aircraft developed from the World War II era Fairchild C-82 packet and was designed to carry a wide variety of cargo and be able to airdrop cargo by parachute. The C-119 had more usable cargo space, a more powerful engine, a stronger frame, and could handle larger loads than the previous version ever could. Its cargo hauling ability and its unusual twin boom design earned it the nickname Flying Boxcar. The first C-119 prototype made its initial flight in November 1947 and production ran until 1955 with over 1,000 C-119s being built in Fairchild's factory in Hagerstown, Maryland. On October 26, 1956, one such flying boxcar departed from Stewart Air Force Base, Tennessee at 9.17 a.m. piloted by First Lieutenant Robert Hintz and co-pilot 2nd Lieutenant Walter Gordon Jr. Two other crew members were on board, including Tech Sergeant Marvin Siegler, Crew Chief, and 1st Lieutenant Grace Young, flight nurse. The youngest being Robert, who was only 23. They were headed to Olmsted Air Force Base Middletown, just outside Harrisburg on a cargo airlift mission. By 1.30 p.m., the plane was over Altoona and was cleared for approach. However, as the plane approached Harrisburg, Visibility became very limited due to rain and fog and at 2 p.m. they missed the approach and were cleared for a second attempt just after 3 p.m. This was the last transmission that was heard from the flight crew. Soon after, the plane began its attempt to land. Due to the rain and fog, the mountain was obscured from view as the plane circled and prepared to descend. Official reports state the visibility on top of North Mountain was zero, so when the face of the mountain appeared out of the fog, it was too late and there's no chance for the pilot to react. Three hunters in the area heard a low flying plane followed by two explosions. As they rushed back to camp to get the car to get help, they heard a third explosion. They rushed out of the mountain to Newville to notify ambulance and state police. When the search party finally arrived, they split up and canvassed the mountain, taking over an hour to find a large plane with over a 100 foot wingspan in the foggy conditions. Once personnel from the Olmsted Air Force Base arrived, they immediately taped off the area and guarded it from about 100 cars that had come from the valley to catch a glimpse of the wreck that night. At that point, the access road to the site was no more than an old wagon trail. Trees were topped for several hundred yards leading up to the crash with debris covering 100 yards. The bodies were removed the next day after a priest from Shippensburg was able to give last rites on scene. All four crew members were killed instantly and lost their lives and duty to their country. Even more bizarre is the fact that this isn't the only plane to crash here. In fact, it's actually the third. The first plane crashed in the 1930s, two miles from the scene, and the second plane crashed in the 1940s, only about a mile away, 
Is there a reason why three different planes crashed into the mountain in the same area only decades apart? Back in the 18th century, as Perry County was being settled, it was a common practice to name a piece of property. The name Pandemonium was coined by English poet John Milton in his 1677 book titled Paradise Lost. In the book, Pandemonium was the capital city of hell. It comes from the Greek pan, meaning all, and daemon, meaning demon. It can be translated to the abode of all demons. The Deal family is credited with the first people to use that name. Charles Deal Jr. used it for a track in 1762, as did Daniel Deal for his track in 1787. Why they chose that name is lost to history. Perhaps they were fans of Milton's work, or maybe there were other reasons for naming their homesteads after the abode of demons. Regardless, the name stuck and was used in a reference to the rest of the nearby areas. Samuel Deal's property was not named, and it was this tract that was later passed to the Henry family, one of the first settlers in the area, and the valley later became known as Henry's Valley after them. It was a small community with one building doubling as a church and a school, with some farms, and grist and sawmills. In 1843, the tannery was built and was the main financial asset for the small community until it closed in 1890. Nothing remains of the community except for Pioneer Cemetery, the partial foundation of the tannery, and some field and property markers slowly being reclaimed by the forest. The school closed in 1912, with the very last family leaving shortly after when soil conditions became too poor for farming. Life in Pandemonium was hard. Aside from the normal difficulties of being a pioneer, wolves and wildcats were so common at the time that women had to wave torches at them to keep them at bay when their husbands were away, and children would go home to home across the valley with a fire basket, supplying homesteads with torches to scare off predators. A large number of women and children died as there were no doctors nearby. For medical help, they would have to cross over the next mountain to see the nearest doctor. This lack of medical access resulted in a high rate of childbed fever among women who had just given birth and was the cause of many deaths. Most of the graves marked with small mountain stones are those of children who died in infancy. Aside from death caused by wild animals and a lack of medical access, one man, James Hazel, was mysteriously shot in the back while hunting. It took four days for the search party to find him, his murderer never being found. Another cause of murder and pandemonium is of the runaway slave. According to legend, a female slave who had escaped from a plantation was making her way through the valley one night when she was chased up a tree by hunting dogs and shot by locals, who, in the darkness of night, thought she was a bear and was buried in Pioneer Cemetery where she was shot. In another case, a traveling salesman, known as Switzer, traveled the mountain selling small articles such as needles, thread, and other commodities. He was overcome so badly by smoke that when he went to the edge of the mountain for safety, he fell off the rocks and perished. Even then, ghost stories were told in Henry's Valley. If crossing a mountain on moonlit nights, if one saw a man as tall as a door, and if one follows him from the road, he will be led to the scene of tragedy and vanish. People have had strange encounters at Pioneer Cemetery, including hearing responses from a child named Sadie seeing an apparition at the rear of the cemetery. Some have even seen a strange apparition walking the mountain roads at night. Was the town of Pandemonium named in reference to an old book? Or did the settlers think the ghost stories and deaths on this mountain could be caused by the abode of all demons? Join us in our search for answers as we investigate Haunted North Mountain. Hey there, thanks for clicking into this video. Stay until the end to see the funny moments. Also, show some love to the like and subscribe buttons. It lets us know we're doing a good job of our content. And now, let's get into the video.
Arriving at the base of the mountain, we stopped at a spring for some fresh mountain water. This stuff was way better than the bottled stuff at the store. I have a water bottle. Up. Oh, nice and cool too, man. Oh, always good. That's that's better than bottle water right there, boy. After filling our bottles, we began our slow ascent to the top of the mountain. Our first stop, the Three Square Hollow Vista. Once we arrived at the lookout, the very first thing we did was admire the view while we planned out the night. Nighttime footage just doesn't do it justice. Hey, look, there's some cows. There's a cow? Yeah, they're down there somewhere. <laughs> As always, whenever you're dealing with spirits, it's always important to protect yourself. So we got together and joined in prayer. Heavenly Father, our gracious God, Lord Almighty, we thank you so much for this great night. We're able to come together and come up this beautiful area as we're going to Lucy's Peak, the North Mountain Plain Track, and Pioneer Cemetery. Lord, I thank you so much for the friendship and fellowship I have with everybody that's right here right now. Lord, I want to come to you right now from inside my heart and kindly ask you for protection tonight. Heavenly Father, please protect us from all negative evil spirits that wander the earth. Help us to have great fellowship together and experience things that will put us in true awe of your presence. Heavenly Father, I can't thank you enough for us coming together and me meeting everybody here. And I know that you will protect us because we have faith in you. And we love you. We know that there is nothing that your power cannot do. Let us pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits to wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. 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 After the prayer, we're going to start the usual routine of grabbing all of our equipment cases, deciding what equipment to use, and start the setup process. But, before we could get to that point, our team medium Bailey informed me that I had already attracted the attention of something. So we rushed to grab a few EMF meters. So Brady, just yes. letting you know he's coming from the bottom of the mountain. Like that way? Yes. He was attracted to us because of Brady's prayer. That's where I pictured him coming from. Did you like my prayer? No, he didn't like it. You didn't like my prayer? That's why he's coming. Why don't you come here and tell it to my face? <laughs> I did just get a chill right up behind my back when I was standing over there setting up that meter. Is something wrong with my prayer? Don't you like people praying here? Do you have a problem with God? I'm sensing something here and right over here. We have multiple ways for you to let us know that you're here. Any one of these lights, you can approach and find a way to communicate with us. Talk to us. We want to experience your presence. You've used this device before, I know you have. Here's a reminder. See, look at this. Like this. Brian. Brian. Where? Okay. This tree here. Go yeah. past it. Farther out, though. Yeah. We're getting hit from the other meeting, too. Oh, yeah, it is blinking. He's moving on. Look, he's walking again. Maybe he's he's following away Jason. From away from us. He's not here anymore. Is that there? Yeah. I'm just thinking. Cause, so I've seen his figure before, but when you were praying, and I was 
I was doing like my meditation chant during the prayer and like that was the first time I've ever seen like his face come through. After getting some activity, Bailey felt that his spirit left. So before heading out to the next location, we decided to try a quick portal box session to see if there are any other spirits nearby that wanted to talk. How many spirits are here? <laughs> My name's Brady, what's your name? Okay, so quick note here. Eddie is my spirit guide and I often meditate before investigations to cleanse my energy and ask him for guidance. And I see him as having lots of energy. So I thought it was cool there was a spike of energy on the K2 meter before he said he was here and watching my walk. The man that was here, where did he go? Why did he leave? Who is the man that keeps walking this mountain? Did you live in the mountain? Did you live in Henry's Valley? Wait, did it say this one? Is there a Lucy here? Did you hear yes? Hi Lucy, how are you? Another note here. JD is sitting next to Brady, and in from the shot, brings out a rock Bailey gave her and is playing with it on the picnic table. Remember that, as this will come up again in the video. Apparently, there's something special about it. What was that? Okay, thank you. Thank you to all the spirits that have come through. If there's any spirits in this device, I'm going to ask you to leave the device before I turn it off. Thank you for talking with us. What'd you find? It's just a rock that Bailey gave me. Next, we packed everything up and headed to the plane crash. Shortly after arriving at the plane crash, Bailey thought she saw something in the woods next to the road. So as Brian sweeps this area of his night vision binoculars, we captured these EVPs. After getting the feeling there was a presence there, we grabbed some EMF meters and decided to head out on foot to the crash site and see if there's anyone eager there to talk to us.
Yeah, there's three dips here. It's hard with the weeds. But it's right here where I'm standing, where it's dipped in. This yeah. is where the main cabin dug in. And if you go over here, there are more weeds. There's another dip over there. Just as we finished walking to the crash site, we caught another EVP. Apparently, whoever was there knew we were here now, and they decided to talk to us. We brought some devices for you here tonight. If there's any spirits here, can you use these devices to let us know you're here? Can you make those lights light up for us? All you gotta do is touch one of them. I'm better with that. Here, I'll show you. You don't have to be afraid of them. Oh, they want to take you either. Yeah, like that? 1.5. Getting something. Wow, Can you do this for me? You're starting to go crazy. Can you know, light it up all the way? That couldn't have been from you walking. Can you do that again for me? You walk by it again. No, no. Were you the captain? Were you a crew member? Brady, I just saw someone walk across this field right here. Come closer. We just want to communicate and know what happened here. Did you just hear voices off in that direction? Yeah, I keep on hearing voices mm -hmm. off. Can you tell me what happened here? Can you tell us your names? Did you do your preliminary flight check? What were your last thoughts before you crashed? Did you miss not being able to say goodbye to your family and friends? After Bailey saw someone walking nearby, getting responses on her EMF meters and intelligent EVP responses, I was very happy that we may have made contact with one of the flight crew members. So again, we packed everything back up and headed to Pioneer Cemetery. When we got to the cemetery, we started our initial walkthrough and filming some b-roll. As soon as we approached the entrance though, we started getting EVPs, and Jason number one had a personal experience at the rear of the cemetery. Yeah, so while we're here, um, this is Pioneer Oh, there's a spider. Keep a rehide. Fine, post to, uh, we should have brought our painted rock and left it here. Hope you hope you guys are okay. We brought some friends with us. Yeah, you are. Shaky. Oh, back there. With that pile of rocks, dude. Yeah. I went. 
lights out. And I was just talking, asking if there was really anybody like there and stuff. And then all of a sudden it kind of got warm, like a warm breeze. And then I just got, like I couldn't even catch my breath. But like, like I'm freaking like crazy, it just it's like all over me. Like, <laughs> are you okay, sir? Look at that. It's literally going away though. That's pretty cool. Back there in the dark. Yeah, that's that's, that's the, the area that I was talking yeah, about. <laughs> that's the area Brian always gets called to. The first time that Chad pulled there that way, there was actually a broken branch down the trail up above, so I normally check for that first anymore. After Jason number one's personal experience behind the cemetery, we all decided to go back there and see if any of us could experience an encounter like his firsthand and see if there's anyone there. There's definitely a different energy out here. Hi. Uh, Can you come back and make everybody else feel like you kind of made me Brady, there's way? something over this way. Something just touched my back. Who's here with us? My shirt clinging clinging to my back, but like at the back, at the lower right. And it keeps pushing. After the girls felt something touching them, Kaylee had a strange urge to play tag, a game she normally doesn't like to play. So Brian thought maybe Sadie wanted to play tag, and that's who was touching them. So we went back to the cemetery, and Bailey tried contacting Sadie with dowsing rods. I'm channeling energy to Sadie. Sadie, use my energy. My friends here that I have tonight, are you wanting to play tag with them? Cross the rods for yes. I see you're trying. Just a little bit further. All right, Sadie. Thank you. After getting a possible response from Sadie, but nothing else with the dowsing rods, we decided to walk back to the entrance of the cemetery and decide what to do next. While we were discussing it, some weird things happened. Maybe this was Sadie's way of playing with us? Either shit is falling from these trees or things keep getting thrown at me. I just had two objects hit right here behind me. Found in that area. There was another one. Just landed right in front of me. Alright, continue. What? Did you just throw something? No. Oh, there are acorns. We'll just throw and hit the kitchen here. After Jason number one's personal experience behind the cemetery, and after Jason number two almost getting hit multiple times by acorns in different areas, while none of us did, and even managing to hit the K2 meter square on of acorns, we were having a hard time drawing conclusions from what activity we had experienced. Was Sadie being playful, or did something there not like the Jasons? We decided to test this theory by splitting up the group. Jason Squared and myself left the cemetery to try a dowsing rod session by the road while everybody else stayed behind. Can you cross these rods if there's any spirits here? There you go. Thank you. Can you straighten these rods back out, please? 
all the way. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Did you live in Henry's Valley? Buried in Pioneer Cemetery. All the way. Thank you. After the dowsing rod session, we all regrouped in the cemetery, and since it was getting late, we decided to close out the investigation. Jason number two did a final sweep of the cemetery, while Jason number one and myself got the portal box out, since I still had unanswered questions and wanted to try one last time to get some answers. Everybody else joined us in the session. Is Sadie here? Is John here? If there's any spirits here, can you tell me your name? Can you tell us your name? Our names? Do you have any messages for us? How are you? Awesome. I'm doing good. How are you doing? How many of us are here? I thought I heard seven. Seven. I did do a head count here, and there were seven of us inside the cemetery. Jason number two, Kaylee, and Brian weren't in frame of the video. Are you happy that we're here? All I felt was bugs. <laughs> no. No to what? But he asked if they were happy if we were here. Yeah, I just got a really uneasy feeling. Do you want to talk to us? Let us know. Do you want us to leave? I'm gonna turn this device off if you came through to talk. Thank you. Please leave this device before I turn it off. After getting the feeling they wanted us to leave from the portal box responses, we decided we were ending the investigation. So we packed everything up for good this time and left North Mountain. Is the lookout haunted? I'm not convinced. While we did have some physical activity there for our mail meter and Jason number two experiencing a cold chill while setting up equipment, it wasn't until after Bailey felt a spirit approach and he seemed to have left afterwards. We did get some responses from the portal box, but the responses seemed to be from different entities. I think our responses came from spirits nearby who don't normally reside at the lookout and just came to talk. I think most of the stories I heard about the lookout may have been stretched a bit. Is the plane crash haunted? I'm convinced. We did seem to get a fair amount of physical activity there with the mail meter and K2 meter that coincided with some intelligent EVP responses, which is pretty significant. 
Bailey did see a spirit more than once while there too. I'm also convinced we made contact with the flight nurse, Grace Young. All considered, I think she resides there. Is Pioneer Cemetery haunted? I'm convinced. We had more than one personal experience, including Jason number ones, the girls feeling that someone was touching them, and the acorns hitting Jason number two consistently, and even hitting the K2 meter, which I think is very strange. We also had portal box responses that coincided with the names of people who are buried there. In addition to hearing names of people from our group, and even when asked how many of us were there, they correctly said seven. I definitely think there is multiple spirits who reside there, and if they want you to leave, they will definitely make it known to you. And now, my favorite part of every video, the bloopers. If you made it this far, thanks. It's all downhill from here. I'm only at like 14%, man. No, I was at like 7%. I'm legally blind. I'm legally blind. I cannot see. I'm legally blind. You don't drink water? Water's good for you. I don't know what you guys are talking about. What? It tastes like alcohol. Hello. Oh. Oh, I just, oh. <laughs> it's, it's on you again. Oh. It's your lamp. <laughs> oh. Go away. Is that a frog? Yeah, he's looking at <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm out. Yeah. Bailey, come back. No. I hate it here. Frog, <laughs> 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 uh. I will fight it. <laughs> 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 I hate it here. No, stop, Brian. I will start crying. No, seriously, guys, stop. Stop. I hate it. I'm literally gonna start crying. I walked up like this. I, I, I was like, no. I'll catch it and I'll put it in the back of the truck. <laughs> no, please don't. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, wait, do you hate it here yet? I, I, yes, I hate it here. <laughs> Go away, Hornet. What's that sound? Oh, fuck! What was that? Whew. I just smacked his ass out of the air. Damn B, it sounded mm -hmm. like a broken fluorescent light. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Big old Hornet. Ah. Oh. No, but it scared me. Yeah, you guys just follow this trail back, you'll find it. Oh, I, I think we can mic it. Well, yeah, you have a light. What do you expect? Don't touch me, I'm fragile. <laughs> Brady, don't film my butt. Stop filming. Yeah! No Work at Money Maker. No butt cam. Only link. Oh, only fans link is in the bio. Hey, I'll get it from the other end. <laughs> 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 You're all kinds of action tonight, aren't you? Barely so. From the front, from the back. Dang. Get it from the side. Woo! <laughs> Sometimes when I date, I feel like a train. Choo choo. <laughs> oh, Bailey gave you a rock. Mm -hmm. Bailey never gave me any rock. She gave me a rock. What? I can give you a rock. I have many rocks. I, I traded her. Your place. 
I actually, no, they're in my room. I'm just sad because everyone's getting rock gifts, and I haven't gotten that rock I'll gift. get you a crystal, don't you worry. Yay. Okay. Protect me. Brady, no, -uh, I gave you some. There's some in your necklace. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Spoiled rat. I am spoiled. To see the investigation from a different perspective, click the link to see Pint Paranormal's video of the investigation.